Welcome back guys to Java Space. So in this video we are going to talk about consents. So in the previous video we talked about consents and it, the, the, the word kept coming on and coming on. And maybe you are wondering what are these consents? So we mentioned that AOP modularized cross-cutting consents. And this code that was tangling, that was scattered, is put in a single place and then used where it is needed throughout the entire application. So a cross-cutting concern is a code that is needed in many parts of your application. If you want to do logging, logging is needed in many parts of your application. If you want to do security, Security is required in many parts of your application. Transaction management, monitoring, caching, you know, business rules. You might want to say, you know, I'm just making an example with business rules. All functions that are called after 5 p.m. should have some certain, you know, rules applied to them. That could be a rule. Error handling. Throughout the application, you have error. You have error handling. So these are the concerns we are talking about. So this concern, concerns. Before AOP, they will be scattered throughout your application. So you can just imagine what kind of code that is. So what are the problems that AOP is solving? Or what are the problems of code that is not modular, modularized or code without modularization? You will have what we call code scattering. You have duplicate duplication of code everywhere. And if you have duplicate code, you know one of the problems if duplicate code is maintenance nightmare. Let's say you have a requirement to change the way you do security or um, transaction management. And if you have to change that everywhere you have done security or you have done transaction management, there is likelihood also that you will forget to do changes in one of the places. Or if you have to do it everywhere, you can just think about it. In a, in a code base that has many classes, that's a na maintenance nightmare. And it's a problem with uh, code duplication. Then we have code tangling. This is where now we are talking about you are mixing concerns now. You find that you're mixing transaction management with your business logic. As we mentioned, with tra uh, transferring ac uh, money from one account to the next account. All you need to do is to say save, you know, uh, debit this uh, the account credit this other account. You don't, you don't have to be dealing with things like uh, commits, transaction rollbacks, uh, you know, uh, and, and all that. That is none of your business. So now, if you don't have modularization, you end up mixing consent. You find your class or your, your, your whatever class or method becomes a jack of all trades. It does so many things. There is no single responsibility. And when it's like that, code becomes harder to test. If you want to test your security, for instance, or transaction, uh, sorry, if you want to test uh, not security, not transaction, you want to test your business logic, you also have to include transaction management. You also have to include security. Whereas that was not your what you wanted to test. So you see that it's almost impossible in this case to perform uh, unit testing. Why? Because your code has been uh, tangled or because your code, the, 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 the functionality has, has mixed in a way that it becomes impossible to test just uh, units of your, of your application. So how does AOP works? So there is a concept called within. So within from Spring, they say linking aspects with other application types or objects to create 
an advised object. And this can be done at compile time using the as aspect J compiler, for, for example, or it can be done at load time, or it can be done at runtime. So Spring AOP, like other pure Java AOP frameworks, performs within at runtime. We are going to talk more about uh, these concepts as we as we go on with our with our series. Sorry.